I'll be the first to admit that my backup processes in my home lab aren't great. Until now. I've been a big fan of the Synology ecosystem, so when they wanted to sponsor an upgrade to my home lab, I was like, yes. So out goes the janky Proxmox ZFS backup server and remote server that's been offline for like a year, and in comes my RS-822 Plus and a brand new DS-923 Plus for remote backups. And let me tell you what, it is so much better. Let's start with what I was running before and why I wanted to upgrade. My main storage server is a virtualized TrueNAS instance on my Epic server, which houses 12 separate 12 terabyte drives, running a 3v dev config that nets me roughly 95 terabytes of usable space. This isn't changing. What's changing is my backup server and my remote server. My backup server was just a Proxmox setup with three 14 terabyte drives that would just house my ZFS replications from TrueNAS. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, but I wanted something better since for one, I no longer need a backup Proxmox system due to my new HA Proxmox cluster. And two, after using my Synology server, I found myself leaning more towards their ecosystems for backup. So why not just dive all in? And if we want to follow the three, two, one rule, we need a remote backup as well. And currently I don't even have that. So the DS923 plus will be huge. All right, before we dive into the full backup setup, let's briefly cover the actual hardware that I'll be using. The main local backup system is going to be my Synology RS-822 Plus, which I've shown in a few videos. I'll link those down below if you want to see more of my 6 out of 10 face. There are a few changes since the last video though. One is that we added a 10 gigabit networking card that also has dual NVMe slots for caching. And two, we've upgraded the storage in here to four of these fancy 12 terabyte Synology branded drives. Thanks, Synology. For the remote system, we're using a DS923 Plus with four 10 terabyte drives. I'll show the specs and everything here if you want to check it out. Pause the video if you don't have Superman level reading skills. Wait, does Superman even have the ability to read fast? I don't know if that's actually a thing. But yeah, one really cool thing I noticed with that system is how easy it is to access the NVMe slots on the bottom, which is nice, but I'm not using them. It's a remote system. Come on. So yeah, enough of the boring stuff. Let's talk about the backup processes. To explain my backup processes, I'll first need to explain what needs to be backed up. I mentioned that my TrueNAS system is my main storage server, and this pretty much holds three things. My current DaVinci Resolve projects for all my editing, all my past YouTube videos, and my Lightroom photo library. But we have other things that need backups, which are me and my wife's Windows machines, and my MacBook. Luckily, Synology has the ecosystem that is built for this. After setting up my main backup server as a brand new device, I created a main pool in RAID 5, which netted me 32 terabytes of free space. But Brett, your TrueNAS system has 95 terabytes, and, and I learned in school that 95 is greater than 32. Yes, and thanks to the Louisiana public school system, I learned that too. But don't worry, I'm only using a very small amount of those 95 terabytes, so we're good. The first thing I wanted to do was to back up my three main TrueNAS file systems. TrueNAS is a ZFS system which allows snapshots and replications to other ZFS systems. But Synology runs ButterFS. Well, I guess the video's over. Now, we have a few options. The most obvious one is actually one that I was running before, and that's to use rsync. I have a video on how to set that up, but the gist is that you need to generate an SSH key in TrueNAS, then copy that to an authorized key directory on your Synology system, then set up the rsync job back in TrueNAS. This actually works really well, and all your files will transfer over as often as you'd like. I went with this since I've run it with great success in the past, and you know the old saying, if it ain't broke, then break it and complain about it on the forums. I think that's it. But I mentioned there were a few ways to do it, and the other way is to use my absolute favorite piece of software in the Synology ecosystem, and that is Active Backup for Business. I know, it doesn't sound sexy, but it's crazy how useful this software is. This is a one-stop shop to backup everything from PCs, 
Macs, Linux servers, file servers, virtual machines, and even a whole other Synology NAS. Since my TrueNAS file systems are also set up as SMB shares, I can use the file server backup to connect directly to that server and select which shares I want to back up and how often. For now, I'm sticking with rsync because it seems like it's a touch faster than doing everything over SMB, but we are far from done with active backup. Remember how I said that I needed to back up my Windows machines and my MacBook? Well, this makes it stupid easy. On any system you want to back up, all you have to do is go download and install the Synology Active Backup for Business Agent, and from there, it will guide you through the process of connecting to your Synology server. Once you're connected, you can control all your backups directly in the app on your Synology system. You can set what is backed up, when and how often the backup runs, and even how long each version is kept for. And that's it. Your machine will do everything in the background and you won't even notice it. My favorite part about all of it honestly seems kind of lame, but it's how easy they make it to recover stuff from your backups. There are usually two scenarios where you need to restore backup. One is when you accidentally delete or modify some files and need to get those back. And the other is a full system loss where you need to restore everything. And guess what? When you go to restore from your backups in here, you have the option of restoring a file or a folder and to restore your entire system. The former will bring you into the active backup portal where you can browse the actual file system that was backed up and select all the folders and files you need restored. The latter gives you a download link to the Synology restoration tool depending on what kind of system you're backing up from. And from there, you can restore an entire device from the backups you created on your Synology system. And I know a lot of you are thinking, wow, a backup system that lets you back up your system, big deal. Yeah, I get that. But what makes this great is that, for one, it's easy as shit not only to run the backups, but to restore them as well, and two, you're not balancing five different softwares to handle backups from all your different systems. It's just one. And if this sounds like too much for you, or if it's overwhelming, there's another option for your Windows and Mac systems, and that's Synology Drive. This app runs on your system and connects directly to your Synology NAS to back up whatever folders you want in near real time. It's a bit easier for some people since instead of managing everything in the Synology NAS, it's done directly on your machine. So. If you like the idea of that more, or if you just want more of a real-time backup setup, then go ahead and check out Synology Drive. At this point, we have our TrueNAS system being backed up via rsync and our Windows and Mac machines using active backup. This is honestly a solid setup already, but one thing we need to focus on is versioning. I mentioned that this is built into active backup. When you do the initial setup, you can choose how many versions you want to keep, then when you go to restore your files, you can toggle between all your different versions and pick which one you want to use. Again, a feature that you kind of expect, but when it's so easy to use like this, then it's just awesome. I mean, think about it. When you're restoring files from a backup, you're probably already annoyed and stressed, so who wants to then turn around and use an annoying backup system? Masochists. That's who. You may be thinking that with all these versions being stored from all your different systems that you'll run out of space pretty fast. Well, not at all actually. The versions will only take up the space it needs to based on the changes from the last version. So if your first version is a full one terabyte backup and you only add 10 gigs of anime before your next version, then that version will only take up 10 gigs. And even cooler is that if you're backing up a bunch of different systems that share the same files, then Active Backup will actually catch that through deduplication and reduce the amount of space needed. So if you're backing up like 20 Windows systems, Active Backup will be like, hey, we don't need to store 20 of the same Windows system files. Let's just keep one and share that with all the backups. It'll even show you how much space you're saving through this process. And if this sounds like I'm fanboying over this, then I really am. This has nothing to do with sponsorship. I actually think this is a game changer. Well, cool. Active Backup has more magic tricks than David Blaine. Jesus! But what about your rsync backups? Yeah, we don't get versioning with those. Or do we? I said earlier that TrueNAS is a ZFS system 
which allows for snapshots and replication, while Synology uses ButterFS. But guess what? ButterFS also lets you use snapshots and replications. See where this is going, right? Using the Snapshots app in Synology, we can set up snapshots on our rsync location. This will essentially give us our versions and allow us to pick and choose which versions we use when we want to restore. This entire ecosystem is so flexible, it's actually insane. You have to go down in the comments and say, wow, Synology is so flexible that I bet they can do the splits. You have to comment that. And similar to Active Backup, we can browse for individual files and folders, or we can restore the entire thing. You can see I'm also running snapshots on my Active Backup directory, and why would I do that if it already has versions built in? Isn't that unnecessary? Yes, completely. You don't need to do this. I just turned it on to see what would happen. The cool thing about snapshots on here is that you can run them on anything. Your home directories, your SMB shares, your Synology drive backups, it doesn't matter. And then you can use replication to send all those snapshots to another location, even another NAS running ButterFS. So let's look at these two processes side by side. Both have scheduled backups that can move entire systems or just individual directories. Both have versioning, whether built into the app or through snapshots. Both are efficient with those versions as to not waste valuable storage space. And both allow for restoration based on each of those versions. Is there any more you actually need? I don't want to hear anyone making excuses about not having a proper backup system after I'm showing you all this. Well, there you go, a proper local backup done and ready to go, but we aren't done yet. The 321 rule requires us to have a remote backup system. Yes, that means you'll have to do the unthinkable and leave the house. Not just yet though. I went ahead and set up the DS923 Plus, which was exactly the same as my 822 Plus, even used RAID 5 again. Now take a guess at what software we're going to be using to get everything from my main backup system to this remote system. Did you say Carrier Pigeon? How'd you know? Yeah, we're using Active Backup for business, baby, because in there, you have the option to back up an entire Synology system to another Synology system, and that's exactly what we want to do. This requires me to set up Active Backup for business on the remote system, and then Active Backup for business agent on the main backup system, because if you think about it, the main backup system here is acting like our Windows and Mac systems where we needed the agent installed to connect to our backup location. So it's pretty much the same thing. We install the agent, enter the IP of our remote system, and kick off the backup process, which will take a long time. Notice I haven't actually brought my remote system anywhere. It's still local. That's for a few reasons. The first is that you'll want to run your first backup locally since it'll be the largest and moving data over your local network is going to be so much faster than over the internet. Unless you're one of those hyper nerds with like 10 gig super fiber, in which case I hate you. The next reason is that we actually have to set up a VPN connection on the remote system before bringing it anywhere. Remember how we had to enter the IP of our active backup server? Well, if that's a remote server, you probably don't want to deal with using a public IP that could change, as well as port forwarding and all of that good stuff. A VPN will allow us to have our remote system connect back into our home network, no matter where it is, and we can essentially treat it as a local device. How you want to do this is dependent on your network setup. I run a Unify gateway, which has an open VPN server built in, so I'm using that to generate a profile, but you can also just use the local Synology server to spin up an open VPN server by downloading the VPN server app. Then go into the network interfaces setting on your remote system and create a new VPN connection with that profile that you exported. Once you do this and connect, your remote system will be discoverable on your local network, no matter where it is in the world. One tip is that if you want to still be able to access the remote server via its local IP, then you'll want to check this multiple gateways option. From here, you can literally go plug it in anywhere and it'll automatically make sure that that VPN connection back home is ready to accept all your juicy backups.
All right, Editor Brett here, and I just wanted to update you guys on something because as I was editing, I realized the whole VPN setup thing may have sound convoluted and confusing for some people, so I want to introduce another way of getting your backups from your main backup NAS to your remote NAS. We are going to use a combination of the Synology DDNS feature and Hyper Backup. So on your remote NAS, the first thing you'll want to do is go in and create a DDNS record. And what this is going to do is it's automatically going to take the public IP of your remote NAS and link that to a free Synology domain and keep that updated so that you don't have to worry about your remote IP getting updated and having to manually update that. You can just use the free domain provided by Synology. And a cool thing about this is that it actually provides free encryption through Let's Encrypt and does it all automatically with one checkbox. The next step is to go install Hyper Backup Vault. We'll need this if we're using Hyper Backup as our client on our main backup system. And the last step is going to be when you actually deploy this is to go into the router configuration and forward port 6281 to the local IP of that NAS. You'll also have to forward the HTTPS DSM port, which is 5001 by default. And you only have to do this for one part of the setup. You'll see in a bit. Then on your main backup system, you'll go into Hyper Backup, use that domain that we created on our remote NAS, and log in, which is why we port forwarded 5001. And once we do that, we can select what folders or actually use the entire NAS and back that up to our remote system. And like I said, this may be a bit easier for people if they don't want to deal with a VPN. So if that sounds useful for you, then go for it. And you're probably wondering what the best place is to deploy your remote server. And that's going to be at your friend's house that has the fastest internet connection. And if they're hesitant about letting you deploy your spooky little box, then bribe them with free storage, which is exactly what I did. I told my buddy he could have five terabytes of space on my remote system. So I created a user for him, gave him access to active backup and set a five terabyte quota on the user. And just like that, he now has access to backup all his systems on there as well. In terms of how the full backup process performs, well, it's obviously not going to be as fast as when it was local, but unless you want to run an extremely long fiber connection directly to a remote location, then that's about as good as it gets. And just like that, my home lab backup process has been upgraded from a basic ZFS replication between two systems, no Windows or Mac backups, and no remote backups to everything we just saw. I am beyond happy with this setup, and there are many more features and backup methods that I didn't even include, such as Hyper Backup, Cloud Sync, Google Workspace, and Microsoft 365 backups. Plenty of potential for future videos here. But that's all I have for you today. Let me know down in the comments if you're running a Synology system, as well as what you think about it. I'll leave a link to the products I'm using, as well as some suggested ones if you want to replicate what I just did. If you like this video, then drop a like. If you think I'm a total cutie and want to go on a second date, then smash that subscribe button. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreons and YouTube members. You guys are my full backup system with one click restoration. I don't even know if that's a compliment, but you guys are fabulous. If you're still watching, you're fabulous too. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.